All right, everyone, John here with another tutorial. This time we are going to work on vehicle designs. And we're going to make something kind of that would fit in the world of this mech here, but we're going to make a tank. We're going to make something a little less uh, complex than a mech. Uh, this mech was tough for me to do, and it's not perfect. Obviously, there's a lot of issues with it. Um, but it's something that I struggle with. I think I struggle with everything. I think every artist feels like they're not good at everything. But uh, mechs and hard surface design sort of things are very tough for me. They're, they're just always been a struggle. And I've improved a lot at them, though. Um, I'm much better at them than I used to be. And so I wanted to, I wanted to do a tutorial where I talk about... Um, my particular process, how I do this. And there's a couple different ways that you can do vehicle design. One way is definitely photo bashing. And I've done some videos talking about photo bashing and how to do that. But this mech here on screen and um, the tank that we're going to design was made, uh, it's going to be made without photo bashing. We're gonna hand draw and sketch everything and it's it's gonna look probably something similar in style to this which I like this style I, I particularly like this one as far as like my own personal style goes I mean the photo bashing is fun and it gets stuff done real quick but I think having an understanding of perspective and drawing and how to create out of thin air the uh, material surface that you're going to be working on the the plane the planar surfaces and all those sorts of things is incredibly important and useful so that's what we're going to go over um, I'm going to bring up on my other window here, if I could get to it. Uh, I have a series of photos here saved of various tank references. So let's open some of these up so you can see them. Um, I'm going to bring this over here. So. I liked some of these designs. This is an M1 Abrams tank. This has been in the US military forever. Um, and then I, I got some of these ideas from more uh, advanced looking tanks, like kind of concept tanks, as just inspiration. I'm not going to try and copy these directly. Uh, I always like this tank. I've, I've used this before in, um, in other ideas. And I just like the really simple surface of it, the paneling, everything about it. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna do something probably along that those lines or this this one here, where um, it's just gonna be an interesting. Here's an older tank, an older uh, tank here from World War II. I don't think we're gonna go quite this route, but I like some of the. Uh, uh, you can draw in here. I like these curves, like around here and whatnot, and um, just the shape of of certain things how cables come out and connect to various aspects like that. I just think that looks pretty cool. Um, let's see, what else did I get? Did I get any more? I think that's the last of them. Or maybe not. Oh, I got one more. I got a couple more here. This is the last one. So, and, I, and I'm looking at this as far as like grime, if I, I don't know if I want to go that route, if I want it to look pristine and clean, like it's just off the manufacturing line or not. Um, but this was just done within 10 minutes of Google searching tanks, you know, trying to find tank designs that exist today or they're already concept ideas that I think look really cool and looking at them for inspiration and how I can draw inspiration from them and you know get ideas so that's what I'm gonna be doing with this here I'll put this stuff back on the other side so I'm gonna close this sky well actually I'm gonna keep mm, no I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep them open we're gonna move over to this because I want to color pick from this guy the colors that I'm gonna use in the final in the final design it's gonna be like I said similar in color to this one because I want it to be I want them to seem like they could fit in the same world or they're part of the same army or something like that, you know. So we're going to go over to this, and I've made uh, a new document. It's 1920 by 1080. I just arbitrarily picked that because I like that uh, size, um, as, as far as landscape at least. And 
it's funny, when I was going to start this, I, I almost went right into designing the final version because I like to get ahead of myself sometimes, but I thought it'd be beneficial if we did some thumbnailing beforehand because uh, thumbnailing is going to really help us flesh out some ideas. And, I mean, I, I did some thumbnailing. I did, like, three or four. I think I did five thumbnails before I settled on this design here. And then that helped solve a lot of problems that uh, were with the original designs. So if I just went with my first design of the mech, it would have been really bad, and then I would have felt really bad, and I would have, you know, you get into the spiraling depression of I can't draw, I can't do anything right. <laughs> you know, if you're like me and you're somewhat, uh, what's the term, neurotic, I guess, and self-conscious. So it's just disheartening. So really fleshing out your ideas in the thumbnail phase is, I think, really important. So we're going to start with that first. And then we'll move into, um, and then we'll move into designing the line work, and we'll, we'll build up things slowly um, till we get to the final image, so that everything's solidified and everything's in the proper place. And there's no, uh, we can minimize the number of mistakes that we would make or the, the number of problems that we could have. So let's uh, let's let's do that. So I made a new layer. And I'm going to switch to my hard round brush, as you can see here. Uh, I love the hard round brush. That's what I. This guy here is pretty much done entirely with a hard round brush. Uh, there's no texture brushes or anything like that. I, some I go to these phases where I just really like the hard round brush. I have my other textured brushes that I use and love, but for some reason I always come back to the hard round brush. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take like a line. I'm going to click it there like that and I'm gonna hold shift and I'm gonna drag it out to about right there and make a straight line and I'm gonna do the same for this and this and I'm just doing that again by holding shift I'm gonna bring this out over here just holding shift and uh, tapping another thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a dot here on the top and I'm just going to hold shift and go down through that point. And I'm going to do the same over here. And I'm doing this because I want this three-dimensional looking sort of rough. Um, I'm going to resize it a little bit. Hold shift and shrink. I want this uh, rough sort of perspective guide pretty much. I don't have a full perspective grid. I don't really care about perspective so much, but I need to care about it enough in order to get the proper design across. So that's that's the goal here. So I'm going to scale back the opacity a little bit, about 25. And I'm going to make a new layer on top. I'm going to call this um, perspective line. Perspective. Sorry, I have a mic right in front of my keyboard, so it's hard to type. All right, I'm going to make a new layer on top of that, and we're going to call this um, Thumb 1. All right, switch back to our hard round brush. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to be looking at my references here, and I'm going to try as best as I can to just do as many ideas as I possibly can. And I'm going to try and get as many bad ideas out as I possibly can as well. So let's go through this first one together. And then I think what we'll do is uh, I'll probably fast forward so this video is not incredibly long. I'll fast forward to the rest of the thumbnails as I work. And then we'll talk about why I did what I did at the end when I when I finish them. So we'll go through this first one together. I'm going to speed through the the other ones that I'm going to do. And then we'll talk about it. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to I'm going to make this actually a little bigger and I'm just going to start drawing lines that kind of go like that and I'm going to start playing around with the perspective of things like this just basic shapes and I'm kind of just treating this like pen pretty much I really like drawing in pen but the problem with pen is that you can't erase and so, um, I 
I'm kind of viewing it like that, where I get the opportunity to, to erase, and I can just hit E and erase stuff out like this. And I'm just kind of, I'm just, I'm kind of not even thinking. I'm just kind of doing uh, designs as I go. And let's say that that's like the tank tread right here. And it kind of goes out and under like that. Let's make that side a little wider. Same with here. Kind of goes under. Something like that. I'm just filling out the basic shape and then, oops, push the wrong button. And then we'll worry about uh, refining, slightly refining the shapes on here. Now my, my thumbnails are always ugly and it's because I'm trying not to spend a super amount of time on them because you don't want to spend a super amount of time on them. They're thumbnails. But you want to spend enough time on them to where you can try and figure out um, roughly where things are going to be placed, how you want things to look. Uh, I think I want something kind of coming out there like that. And. I want to have it clear so that the tank can move. You want the, the tank uh, turret to be able to move all around. And maybe there's a mounted gun on top or something like that. Some of them have that. So this is roughly what I'm going to do. And I'm actually going to shrink both of the perspective line and the thumbnail. I'm going to shrink them down a little bit so I have a bit more room and I can fit more ideas on here. So this one doesn't look quite futuristic like, but I'm just trying to lay ideas down. And honestly, usually your first idea is really bad. So that's what that's what this is going to be. For some reason, I'm not <laughs> putting stuff down anymore because it decided to freeze. That's awesome. Gotta love windows sometimes. All right, so that's going to be that. So that's a really basic tank. Um, it's roughly in perspective. It's kind of in a three-quarter view to where we can see uh, Kind of a front. We we want to we want to design in a three quarter view. That's going to be the easiest thing. Let's say if we pass this on to a modeler, if that's the only view they get, that's probably going to be one of the most valuable views because they can get a sense of the width, the height, the depth, all those sorts of things. They can see all of the different parts and pieces. I know it's easier to draw like in a profile view or front on or something like that, but um, that's not going to be ideal. That's not the ideal view if that's going to be the only view you pass on. And I think we're going to try and design other angles, at least to imply them. And I have an idea of how we might possibly do that, but I'm not quite sure if I want to include that in this video, but we'll get to that. So I'm just going to speed through the rest of these. I'm just using the same idea of I'm holding shift and I'm clicking and I'm making straight lines. I'm freehanding it and I'm using the perspective line underneath in order to, to uh, at least stay within reasonable, uh, realistic perspective lines, I guess, perspective grid. So I'm just going to go really quick through these. You can see me do them. And then um, we'll look at what we have finished and we'll complete the, the, uh, we'll complete the thumbnails at that phase.
All right, I'm back guys. So I've finished the tank thumbnails here and I actually went ahead and colored some of them. I felt like uh, coloring them would be beneficial so I could try and identify the exact maybe color scheme I wanted in case I wanted to veer away from the color scheme I already designed with a mech. I mean, I already used that. It would be interesting to try something slightly different maybe. And I think the design that I'm going to go with after I've made these is going to be this third one on the top here. Now you can see I, I reused the turret a couple times. It's because I really like the way this turret turned out and then when I sized it up to this size I really like that. And then I tried some other ideas but they just weren't working so I like the body shape of this one. It's very flat sleek and um, I like the division here on the front where the tank treads are and um yeah i think i'm gonna go with that one the first one looks too uh it looks too modern or even almost world war ii ish the second one from a tactical standpoint i don't think this little protrusion i put on the front it looks like it jets out forward that's just a perfect target for it to be tagged by an opposing tank or a projectile and the way tanks are sloped their armor, it helps to somewhat def I mean, it's not just thick metal, it, it deflects some too. And so I feel like a, a feature like that just wouldn't deflect a projectile very well. It looks interesting, but it just, it's not functional. The third one, I like the best. It's the turret looks the best, I think. And then the, the body is tactical enough and, and I think designed well enough, like a real tank but still looking futuristic uh, enough, I think, to where I'm happy with that. This fourth one is just too, um, I don't know, plain. It has a similar body to the other one, but it's just, uh, I don't know. I just don't like it. <laughs> I can't explain why. You just get a gut feeling sometimes where you're like, I don't, I don't particularly like this one. The fourth one, or fifth one here, I'm sorry, is I like this shape here, so I, I might use this idea here of the dark, of the black, on the one I picked, so that it's kind of like, uh, I like that idea of it being recessed in so that the turret can rotate up and down in a pretty free way, and then obviously the turret will, the whole thing will rotate left and right in a 360. So I think I'm going to go with this idea and I'm, I'm kind of liking I'm thinking of an idea that I have possibly that might be interesting which is kind of like a rubber housing tubing that kind of flexes like a fabric with it so that dust and, and stuff won't get inside and it kind of protects the maybe the hydraulics and whatnot that are in there so I think I'm gonna maybe take that idea into here we'll see how it goes I don't know and then this one here, it's too narrow, and the, I thought I, the turret maybe needed to be bigger, but I made it too big, and I just, I don't like the way it looks. And that's an, another problem with this one up here, I made this too narrow, whereas I feel like this seems flat and squat. It's a gun on wheels, like a big gun on wheels, that's what we want. So we're going to go with this one here, where my mouse is on. So what we're going to do next is we're going to, I'm going to actually jump into a different program. I'm going to use Sketchbook uh, for the line work just something about sketchbook I really like for mechanical things and so we're gonna jump into sketchbook and I'm going to draw in sketchbook some I'm gonna I'm gonna build up the detail and the line work in order to get it to a point where we can paint it over with detail um, you don't have to use sketchbook if you don't want to you can continue using Photoshop it's just for some reason I f it feels really good to draw in uh, sketchbook for me for these sorts of things I, I can't explain exactly why it just feels more comfortable. It feels better. So we're gonna jump. I'm gonna jump in a sketchbook. Feel free to stay in Photoshop or whatever program you're using. Um, these things, these ideas are they're concepts. They're not explicit to this particular program, Photoshop, where you know it's it's the only thing you can use. So we'll we'll uh, continue to follow along and and we'll build this up in the next half of this video here. All right, so I'm working again in the program Autodesk Sketchbook. I like this program because you can see it has a really nifty um, perspective tool here that's really fancy, and I like to set up my perspe perspective grids with this. Uh, there is a 
perspective tool that I know I think comic book artist Freddie Williams has that I use that is in Photoshop that is also very fa fantastic. It's very good. Um, I'll try to remember to put a link in the video description so that you can use that if to set up a perspective grid if you don't want to, you know, use Sketchbook. I have a pro subscription, which means that I get full access to it. I know you can download the program for free, but it doesn't have very much in the way of, of the pro features. So what you can see me doing here is I'm just um, fleshing out detail and I'm moving it back in opacity and then drawing over the top and then I move it back in opacity and I just keep refining detail as I go and I'm keeping it really loose at the beginning here. I'm not, I'm not too concerned with straight lines. I just want to get, I just want to start feeling out the general features of the tank and how this thing's going to look and work. And I'm not so much trying to, I mean, every iteration there's, there's more detail being added, but I'm not stressing first time through on the, uh, the detail quite yet. And you can see when I zoom in here, it's it's pretty ugly. It's not very nice. And um, I mean, one thing I could have done too, and feel free to do this yourself, is you can draw directly on top of your uh, thumbnail if you so choose. I, I wanted to challenge myself and um, see if I could redraw and recreate what I had thumbnailed. And uh, you can see me struggling here. I, I start playing around with ideas and maybe with the barrel, and I'm like, no, nah, I, I need to stick with the... the uh, the original design that I had and you can see sketchbook has a really nifty um, it's almost like this is why I like it it's almost like drawn on paper because it has this uh, ruler tool essentially that allows me to do that but I eventually just decided to do some I, I could try and mix a bit a bit of the ruler and a bit of freehand and it kind of makes it feel like I'm drawing with pen um, which I said I I liked but I definitely struggled with this and it wasn't until this iteration here uh, where I felt like I had found some grounding and uh, the the thing was going to come together. So, yeah, I'm just rotating the canvas. I'm treating this like a piece of paper. That's really what you got to do. You got to treat it like you're drawing on paper. And when you're drawing on paper, you rotate your canvas a lot. Um, and I think that's something a lot of artists don't do is they don't rotate their canvas. They don't rotate it's like, again, it's like drawn on a piece of paper and you oftentimes spin the paper in order to get a more comfortable angle to draw a line or a stroke or something like that. So that's essentially what I'm trying to do here. I was kind of thinking about this too of, you could kind of think of this almost like I, I drew a second thumbnail really with the, the earlier sketches here. And I think this is important. Uh, maybe it's a little, um, what would be the word you know I'm making extra work for myself it's it's uh, redundant but um, it, it helps me think about things a little more clearly I think and try and figure stuff out uh, a little a little better than doing one thumbnail and then like well time to jump straight into the final one like it, it kind of helped help me get I think this down a little more correctly to uh, view this almost as a second thumbnail, at least the initial stages of this in Sketchbook. And uh, yeah, I'm just I'm just trying to fill out all these angles and designs and trying to make this look uh, like a tank, filling out the um, the more angular forms here. I wanted to keep it flat because most tanks are flat like this. They want to be a smaller target uh, than than usual. Then, then they need, you know, they, they don't want to be a bigger target than they need to be. So the, usually the treads and the, the most of the tank is pretty flat or level so that it's, it's kind of harder to hit. And if it does get hit, it, it doesn't generally take a direct hit. It can try and maybe have the projectile skim off the top and not cause as much damage. Um, I think I mentioned that already in this video. So I'm just keeping that in, in mind as I'm drawing. And then I'm drawing the panels over the tank treads. And I'm, I'm saving the, the treads for last. And actually, I, I ended up breaking what I wanted to do, really, and um, photo bashing the, the treads. And I took a M1 Abram tank tread and, and eventually put it in there as the, um, as the tank tread, just because I was so tired. And I was like, I don't want to do, I, don't, I, I can't get this right. I'm not going to, whatever, you know. We're going to photo bash this. 
you know, there ain't no shame in this game. So, uh, but I do try and play with perspective of the circles and whatnot in, in here. And, um, I think I'd actually probably be beneficial, maybe in December I will do this, is to do a tutorial just on the very bare bones basics of drawing in perspective and how to draw spheres in perspective, like freehand maybe, uh, as well as, uh, other little tips like that um, because I, I get these spheres wrong here it's something I need to practice as well obviously it's these the spheres I'm using for the tank tread wheels are not exactly right I do the best I can though yeah you know I'm working in layers um, sketchbook is really cool because it has this uh, it functions I, I when I first got it it felt very at home it felt like photoshop in a lot of ways it wasn't too different from that to where i i didn't feel like i was lost which is good it's kind of why i like it and i don't know like i said there's just something about it where it feels more free when i'm doing line work in some ways at least basing out line work and the way i did that mech that i showed at the beginning is uh i used i did all my line work in this i did not do any line work in photoshop for some reason, this tank was giving me a hard time, and I end up doing my line work in uh, the final line work in Photoshop, but I get the base of it done here uh, in, in Sketchbook. And I can't explain why, other than sometimes things are more difficult to draw than other things, which is surprising to me because I think a tank is a lot more simplistic than a bipedal mech, but, you know, it happens. So I, I finish here, I save it out, and then I took it into Photoshop here, and I just uh, turned the opacity back and decided to um, do the final line work in Photoshop with my hard, my trusty hard round brush. And I actually add some extra detail on top of it. So again, it's just a continual refinement thing, but the general silhouette and the general shape that I had made in my original thumbnails here is here. You know, and I just, as I went along every step of the way, it's just a continual paring down and improving, trying to improve, not make my job more difficult of the final design. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm just going through, I'm shift. So I click in one spot, I hold shift, and I click in another, another spot, and that's how I create a straight line. The reason why I don't like this as much as the sketchbook version of doing it is because I feel like I get an inconsistent line weight, which sometimes looks cool, it sometimes doesn't. Um, and I actually wasn't going to actually do this step in Photoshop, I was going to just keep the line work that I had, but then I just, I slept on it actually, uh, and I, I just thought about it as I woke up this morning, and I was like, you know, I really need to, uh, I really need to do another layer of line work on there, it's not, it's not to the standard that I want it to be at um i got lucky and did the mech in one shot with the really with the the line work but this one needed a little more massaging and love and that happens sometimes and i think that's why you don't have to take a whole night but taking a step back and you know taking a, a walk going to grab something to eat or something to drink or uh going to just do something else for 5 10 15 minutes and then coming back to your image is oftentimes a really good way of sort of re-encapsulating everything that you've been doing and you can try you can see mistakes that you didn't see before because you kind of refreshed your mind and that's kind of what happened when I woke up this morning I was like you know that line work is not ideal but yeah here I'm just um, I'm thinking about the perspectives uh, lines that I set up two-point perspective uh, I should, you know, while we're talking about this, I should point out uh, a mistake that I see a lot of beginners make that that really affects your artwork. And you can tell when you look at it. So you notice that I use the tool, and if you use the Freddie Williams perspective tool, you'll have to do the same thing, is I set up my vanishing points well off the page, well off the canvas. And the reason for this is that if you have two-point perspective, and you have both vanishing points on the page, generally you're going to have a super warped image. It's going to be extreme and it's not how, it won't be how we visualize things in real life. It won't be the kind of perspective that we see in real life. Um, 
not even this perspective that I'm doing here is really what you would see in real life because it's two point and generally we see in a lot of three point perspective um, it's a little more natural than just a rigid two point but for the sake of simplicity I went with two point so just make sure that when you are drawing in perspective whether it be an environment or a mech or a, a tank or a vehicle like this that you want to have because you're going to be doing probably a three quarter view if it's a vehicle you're going to want to have your uh, perspective your vanishing points well off the page so that you don't have any warping and you have a more natural and realistic looking kind of perspective and that's what I'm kinda that's why I have it set up the way it is here so just a little tip I see a lot of artists that make this mistake and they don't um, they don't seem to realize that and they don't know why it is you know like why is my image look not how come it doesn't look like this other person's image and it's generally because you you have your vanishing points on the page and so you have this really warped and exaggerated sort of view of uh, perspective going on which generally I don't think looks very good has its has its uses if you're trying to emulate a certain kind of lens but I'm not trying to do that here so it, it doesn't fit right it doesn't look right so it wouldn't be appropriate yeah, so here uh, I'm pretty much done with the line work I think I got it to about this point and I felt relatively happy about it I think that it looked uh, looked pretty good um, it's not perfect there's some issues on the far side the side closest to our, our viewing here is pretty good but the far side is a little off for instance the front little cap there on the tank tread is a little fatter than actually the one closest to us it's a little off I see that now but whatever you're gonna do what you got you gotta do what you gotta do so what I do here is uh, I just start blocking in light I use the selection tool to make a selection around what uh, the whole body of the tank was and I'm drawing colors from my original mech I decided to go with those same color schemes and, and keep it in line like they're maybe part of the same army or military force or something like that and uh, I just start going over it and reinforcing it and but still being loose but trying to find the big shapes first before I move to the littler shapes of the design and I was gonna kinda get annoyed by this very uh, bright white background pure white uh, so I thought I would get rid of that so that I could kind of see the color in a true way uh, generally you don't want to paint on pure white because it kind of throws off your values and your perception of color so uh, a muted sort of um, mid-tone like a gray like what I have here is generally a better way to go in my opinion you can always change it later or do whatever you want you know if you want to draw in white that's fine I just have issues personally seen color accurately accurately in that way so I just go through part by part here and I'm just trying to based on the line work that I have underneath flesh it out and make it look uh, good you know make it look like how I want it to look and um, it takes some knowledge of I'm thinking about where these forms are um, you know thinking about the last video I did which was drawing the human head where I was talking about how I was visualizing the planes of the face and how light was in shadow was falling on those planes and how perpendicular for instance are these lines and planes to the light source and I have a light source coming from the upper left hand side of the screen here and the tank is already very geometric and angular so it was a lot easier for me actually with this design to and with the mech too to um, figure out exactly how the lighting would probably look or work and again I'm, I'm thinking in ways of okay this pane this panel here on the tank is more perpendicular than this other panel here so this this one that's more perpendicular is going to have a brighter tone to it it's gonna have more highlights it's going to be higher uh, greater in value so I'm just thinking about those sorts of things as I do this I'm trying to find highlights on the you know the cylinder of the the gun barrel here and all these sorts of things so I'm just keeping all of that in mind and there's only and maybe this can be another video in December that we can do is there's only so much you can do really um, as far as a study I mean this just comes from gaining knowledge through study doing still lifes doing plein air painting um, sketching a lot uh, doing lots of things like that studying things from life 
is how you kind of learn to observe light and then how to emulate it. And I'm not by any means saying I'm emulating it very well here, but I think I'm emulating it well enough to where I get the point across and I can I start to fill out the 3D forms a little bit just because of, of studying really simple things. Um, I would highly suggest studying primitive shapes if you have the chance. Uh, studying primitives like cylinders, spheres, cones, uh, cubes and those sorts of things in different positions would be really beneficial because those are the basic building blocks that make up everything. This this tank, for instance, is made out of cylinders and cubes, pretty much. And that's about it. And so if I know how light affects cylinders and cubes, then I can make rough guesses that are within the ballpark of realistic as far as um, how this is going to be affected as a tank as opposed to a cylinder or a cube. Because I know how light affects a cylinder or a cube, I can apply that and make educated guesses on the tank that has modified cylinders and cubes. And so that's really beneficial. Uh, I think that studying that is really important. And I actually learned that in art school. Um, we did lots of studies of the basic primitive shapes that um, were really helpful. They really helped uh, kind of gain, help me gain that understanding. Yeah, so as I said, I, I think I, I'm pretty much done here. It's just a matter of reinforcing the... So let's recap here. I did my line work, and I got it through many iterative... Um, phases to the point where it's it was pretty much finalized. I could probably just stop at the line work. And then I took that line work and underneath it I did a wash of color to really imply form and shape and value. And I probably could have stopped it there as well. Like that would have been fine. Um, and then it's just all it's all just icing on the cake at this point here. You want to make sure that your design and your painting is working at every level. So it needs to work at the line work. It needs to work at the thumbnail scale. It needs to work at the line work scale. It needs to work at the rough color scale, and it needs to work obviously at the finalized scale. And if you can get that, then you're well on your way to making a really fantastic piece of art. And so you want to think of it as if I stop at this face here, this would be good enough to be done. I could pass this off, and people would think that this looks cool. And that's kind of what you want. Um, so just keep those things in mind. Again, think of primitives, think in perspective, keep your vanishing points off the page. You don't want them on there and warping your image. And uh, just have fun. Don't get too beat, don't beat yourself too, up too much if you can't figure something out or can't do it. I, I was starting to beat myself up with these tank treads and I just said, you know, screw it, we'll just photo bash it in. Um, but just have fun with it, you know? But I think that's gonna do it for this video, guys. I appreciate the support and the views. Uh, Follow me on Twitter. It's at John Torres Art. You can find my Facebook page for that too. All this will, these links will be in the video description, as well as supporting the channel on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash John Torres Art. Just a dollar per video, which if I'm releasing a video a week, that is a dollar a week. Not that bad. Helps support the channel and keep it self sustaining. So until next time, which the video will be designing a gun in 3D, I will catch you guys later. Have a good one.